Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, joined by independent Tesla analyst, Matt Joyce. Ja Matt often joins us to get a deeper insight into a major Tesla event. And of course, we had a major Tesla event yesterday, that being AI Day. If you would have tuned in at the top of the hour to watch uh, the stream of it and you dropped off 28 minutes later, you would have missed it because it did start 30 minutes late as normal operating procedure. Matt, uh, welcome. Just curious, maybe <laughs> let's start there. Why do they always start these events so late? I think part of it is that Elon does not have time to rehearse for these type of events because he's so busy. Another reason that he's probably not going to be on conference calls too much longer. He likes to spend his time focusing on, on engineering problems and being a firefighter. So I think he kind of wings it. <laughs> and that means late start. It's funny because I think of Apple events, I think of highly of Apple, they are, when they used to do them live, they were you know, incredible attention to detail and they were always prepared. I uh, learned a lot about life and watching how Apple does things and always started to the second on time. Elon takes a different approach. I suspect that they will be competitors in the foreseeable future. That'll be another Loop TV episode. Let's uh, focus back on AI day. Highest level, Matt, what were your takeaways? I would say the biggest one is that uh, Tesla is the leader in autonomy and it isn't even close. Uh, much like Apple, you really need a, a vertically integrated hardware and software stack. Uh, you know, they've got Tesla Vision, the full self-driving supercomputer chip, the Dojo and neural network training, uh, over a million electric vehicles on the road collecting data, no other company can copy that vision only uh, self-driving solution for, for general autonomy because they are not vertically integrated like Tesla and they don't they can't leverage a million vehicles on the road. Got it. Uh, anything else jump out? There's something else that jumped out to me from your takeaways. I mean, obviously the Tesla bot, humanoid robot, that's, that's pretty incredible. Uh, was not expecting that. So that says to me that Tesla is just obviously more than a car company. And that's what I hope the mainstream takes away from this is one, Tesla is leading in autonomy and two, they are not just a car maker, which a lot of people both uh, think that one, they are laggard and that two, they're just an auto manufacturer and should be valued as such. So let, let's just dive because it's a fun topic uh, outside of what was a, a geek conversation, fun, to, uh, I, my, I enjoyed, by the way, let's talk about the, going back to the A topic on autonomy and AI. My goal mm -hmm. when I was uh, watching this stream was that just to try to conceptually understand what they were talking about, it got pretty thick, uh, all, good, all good things. And I think it just shows you there are a lot of smart people out there. I'm sure the other auto companies have many smart people trying to figure this out as well, but Tesla's got a lot of them. And this was a re, uh, re, uh, recruiting type of uh, event to bring in some of those AI. The irony around AI is that it's powered by humans initially. And so they got to get good talent there. So let's jump to the, the bot topic for a minute. And it feels like they, he just kind of threw some things. I mean, it's almost as if they kind of dreamed this up a week ago and decided to put something together to show that they're thinking about projects outside of auto to get engineers to want to work there. Um, there, there really wasn't much substance behind it. Am, am I correct? It definitely seems like it's very much in the early stage conceptual uh, part of the ideation. So uh, you know, he was asked a lot about, I was curious about first use cases for Neuralink. He was very clear about what uh, literal applications they would start with and how it would be useful. And here was more vague and just saying, you know, it will do the tasks, the menial uh, repetitive tasks that humans don't like to do. Uh, but I think the main thing is that he, he basically he thinks that they have a lot of the major pieces they need a role pilot cameras, aka Tesla Vision, then you got the full self-driving computer that will be in its torso, that will basically be the brains of the machine. You can miniaturize, you know, little electric motors that they built in cars to potentially control the limbs. 
uh, the neural network in Dojo supercomputer to, to train that vision that it collects. Um, so a lot of those pieces are in place. So that's where I think it's going to take a really long time, but at least they're going to progress doesn't come without putting resources towards advancing something. So uh, I think if Boston Dynamics, if you've seen any of those videos recently, super impressive. And I think, you know, that's a, a company that's only worth a billion dollars. And Hyundai, which is another car maker, owns 80% of that. So if they're not getting flack for at least dipping their toes in that field, um, then I don't know why, why Tesla would be prohibited from that field as well when they've got way more pieces in place than Hyundai does. Uh, so if, if Boston Dynamics can do that as a billion dollar company with limited resources and, and have those insanely impressive and fascinating demonstrations, imagine what Elon Musk's vision, engineering, uh, prowess, and the Tesla resources after create, you know, recruiting some of the best engineers in the world, I think within a handful of years, they'll be able to demonstrate something really, really cool. It, it begs a question just around spending engineering resources that are valuable at whether it's advancing autonomy or other things that Tesla want, wants to work on HVAC, solar storage. Um, is, is this the best use of Let's just look at it from a benefit to humanity standpoint. Is the best use of, of these precious engineers' time to focus mm -hmm. on building a robot? Yeah, and I I hear the argument, and I heard the same thing for kind of the anti-space people. Like, why go to space when we have so many problems here? And that's where it's like, okay, yeah, people should be working on a smart HVAC system. Guess who's working on that? Elon. Uh, people should be working on transportation infrastructure and a cement that's better for, for the planet. Uh, they're working, you know, at least the transportation infrastructure part of that with the boring company. Uh, as far as carbon capture technology goes, Elon just donated $100 million to the XPRIZE to kind of catalyze the, the ideation stage of the best technologies to have a shot to pursue to, to capture that carbon. Um, so I think he's doing a lot of it at once. And just because uh, those things are all so problems doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to advance robotics. Like once again, Boston Dynamics, that stuff is fascinating. Like it's not going to get any better or any closer to being useful technology if we don't have really smart people working on it. Uh, and I think that's going to start happening soon. So we're going to wander back to the autonomy topic and leave the humanoid uh, uh, for a minute here. And on the autonomy piece, there was something, a question came up in the Q&A that caught my attention. It's one that gets frequently asked just around almost like the decision morality of an autonomous system. If there's a pedestrian on the sidewalk and there's a, someone in a car and one of them is going to lose their life in an accident, and how does the... How do you build in uh, this decision tree? What goes into it? And Elon said as a starting point that uh, for humans, things that move fast, they move really slow for machines. And mm -hmm. gave an example of uh, a, uh, something, a rendering task that might take a human a month to do where a machine can do it 60 times in a second. And I thought that uh, in other words, that the, since things are going so slow in the machine's mind, that uh, they can make the proper decision and it is such a, a, a rare case that it will come down to uh, like a morality call. The, uh, uh, it was a good insight for me, a good reminder of just the power, really why machines should be driving cars ultimately. And so when I think about that and driving cars, I think about some of the things that are going on with NHTSA and these uh, 11 accidents that they've had over the past few years and this uh, safety probe. I'm not actually sure what what a safety probe is. Uh, and so I, I love your take is, uh, is this a big deal? Is it, how do you think it plays out in the next few months? I think it'll either take many months or even over a year. And the worst case scenario to me is a recall where Tesla simply pushes a software update with improved Tesla vision. Uh, so the safety probe is basically, there has been 11 incidents where Tesla vehicles on an autopilot have ran into emergency vehicles that are parked on, let's say, the shoulder. Uh, a lot of DWIs were involved, and one person even had a, a suspended license. So, like, it's really hard to blame Tesla for those events, 
Um, but at the same time, like they need to improve and detecting static objects on the side of the road has been a problem thus far with most of the software that's out in the fleet right now. Uh, but what they demonstrated last night in AI Day is that with Tesla Vision alone, they are getting very, very accurate and on par, almost on par with radar in detecting velocity and depth of objects. And so I think once the FSD beta that a, a couple people that I know have, a couple thousand people in the Tesla fleet are FSD beta drivers and testing it out right now, I think once they roll that out, Tesla Vision will be good enough to just push that software update and not have those incidents anymore. So that's where it's kind of like a corner case where Tesla will go out to its fleet, find four dimensional, so 3D plus time as the fourth dimension. So find 40 examples of that same situation and then analyze it, feed it into its neural network and then solve that corner case and kind of have that self-fulfilling loop. So on the uh, topic, uh, on a takeaway, this may be a divergent. We share a lot of views on Tesla. These two, we uh, probably don't share. I think eventually Tesla does embrace other forms. I know the importance of vision and, and anchoring AI, train it around vision. But I feel that especially when you move from analog radar, which is what they dropped and move to digital radar, which is something that has a promise of being many, many times more accurate. I think that it, uh, once the prices come down, uh, we'll agree to disagree on that. And then a second question, uh, or a second topic is just on uh, one of the outcomes of this NHTSA, uh, what's your view on how they market uh, a full self-driving? Do you think that the outcome of this is gonna be that they have to change the name of it or some of the language around how they market it? So autopilot, I believe is an appropriate name, just like with, aircrafts and airplanes, they, that term is autopilot. And that's where in the, you know, the highway part of the flight, that's easy where you're just kind of cruising in the air, pilots can let that system take over. It doesn't mean that the system is taking off and landing for them. It's just in the easy part where they can relax and still be attentive. So that's where I think autopilot is fair. I do think that with the full self-driving name, that that is a fair critique uh, from bears out there that, that maybe full self-driving is a little aggressive as far as the name goes. Um, but people who call it vaporware, I think that's very inaccurate. Mm -hmm. There are so many awesome features that you get with the full self-driving package, like smart summon, like changing lanes, like exiting for you, uh, that add value to your vehicle and to your experience. And it's only getting better and better and rapidly. Uh, so that's where the vaporware discussion uh, the vaporware argument is not good. The, the naming of full self-driving when they're basically saying it will be full self-driving, I think that's a fair critique. I guess we are on the same page on that. I, I think that they will be on their own or forced to make some changes on, on that. It's a guess on my part, but probably would take a year, as you said, to kind of figure itself out. You mentioned vaporware, that is the opposite of what we hear, all substance. Matt Joyce, thank you for illuminating AI Day. And on behalf of Matt and Gene and Loop TV, bye for now.